Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. It's great to be with you today, even if we are not together in person. If you are a guest with us, joining us for the first time, we are really glad that you are worshiping with us. And I pray that this time will be a time of refreshing and blessing for you this morning as we are gathered together. You know, as we were working to make the decision as to what we were going to do about today, uh, there was a lot of conversation about uh, what's going to happen? Is, how's the, is the weather going to cooperate? Is the weather not going to cooperate? And I just wanted to share with you briefly a note on why we are meeting this way instead of together in person at Windy Hills this morning. Uh, quite frankly, the, uh, the weather on Friday when we had to make a decision just was not looking cooperative. It was really hard to tell what was going to come. If any of you have lived in the Northwest for any length of time, you know that the only thing you can't predict for sure is the weather around here. And at the time, uh, the smoke level had the air quality and the unhealthy level and because we're meeting outside and the challenges that come with uh, canceling the last minute and trying to make sure we still have an opportunity to worship together we just had to make a call and we made a call and everything turned out great the air is great the weather is rainy but great uh, and so here we are on Sunday morning when we could be together but uh, you know the great thing is just like we have discovered over the last six months, uh, we can still worship together. God has given us this great ability to, uh, to communicate with one another, to celebrate together, to sing together, even from our own homes. And so I pray that this morning is just a time where you can, uh, where you can experience Jesus, where you can uh, feel him at work in your life, where you can connect with him through song and through prayer uh, and through just a brief time uh, sharing his word together this morning. A couple of things I want to mention as we begin together in our worship this morning, just a couple of announcements uh, is first one thing that we have discovered over the last couple of weeks of not being able to meet together and having to cancel services uh, kind of at the last minute is that we don't have a way to communicate with everyone. Um, for those of you who checked uh, just to see if we'd be meeting, check the website or check Facebook or something, you know, we get those communications up. But if you are not um, well, if, if you're not receiving, for example, receiving our newsletter, one went out on Thursday, so this is a good way to judge. If you didn't get our newsletter on Thursday, it probably means we don't have a way to connect with you. And what I would like to invite you to do this morning, uh, if you have your cell phones and you have the Christ Community app on there, is pull them out, uh, open up the Christ Community app, hit that connect button. And if you're comfortable giving us a phone number or an email address or updating your information, it's a great way to do that as well. Uh, please fill out as much of that connect 
card as you feel comfortable with. Uh, we would love to just be able to communicate with you when we need to. I promise we won't uh, use your information for all kinds of spam mail or you know give it off to any crazy mailing lists, uh, but it would be great to be able to make sure we can connect with you uh, should we run into this situation again. Uh, it also means you'll get the newsletter when we send it out each week. Um, and I would also encourage you to, uh, if you haven't downloaded the Christ Community app, do that and enable the notifications. Make sure that uh, we can send you little pop-up messages that say, uh, that say, hey, church starts in half an hour, hope to see you there, or the service is up, or things like that. Uh, the second thing I would like to mention is October 4th. The day that we get to return to worship at Ridgefield High School is coming up quick. And we are really looking forward to this. We've got a lot going on. It'll be great to get back. Um, into a little bit of our usual routine. Uh, we hope you will join us for that Sunday. We get a new kids uh, ministry kicking off that Sunday, completely redesigned with CC Kids. A lot of stuff going on. October 4, we'll be back at Ridgefield High School for our worship at 9.30, uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, next Sunday, we will be doing our last worship at Windy Hills Winery, so you're invited. Come on out and join us uh, for that as well. Also, Operation Christmas Child. We do this every year, the opportunity to pack shoeboxes that get sent to kids in need all around the world, little gifts so they get to experience uh, a little bit of Christ through a gift at Christmas time. Uh, and this is always great. We had a great turnout last year. I believe we packed more than 150 boxes. So this year I ordered 200, shooting for the moon. But you know, if you don't try, you'll never know. And so we should have those boxes when we get back to Ridgefield High School on October 4. We should have those boxes available. We'll have about six weeks to pack those. If you would like to donate towards CC Kids, who will be packing shoeboxes on Operation Christmas Child Sunday in the middle of November, uh, we invite you to do that as well. You can write out a check with a donation amount, put Operation Christmas Child down on the memo line, uh, drop it in the red box on Sunday morning. Uh, and we would be happy to purchase items that we can then give to the kids to pack so they get to participate in that as well. Uh, you can bring your boxes on any Sunday leading up to that. We will have them all out on Operation Christmas Child Sunday in the middle of November. We'll have them all out. We'll have a time of blessing uh, as we get ready to commission those and send those off. The last announcement that I have for you this morning, I know this was a lot, but there are a few things just on our list, but the last one is a big need from the Ridgefield Family Resource Center. We have been participating and supporting their ministry uh, for, well, pretty much since they started up. We got in on the ground floor and have been one of the consistent support churches uh, supporting this joint operation between Compassion 360 and the Ridgefield School District. And Chris Poppert, who runs Compassion 360 for the school district, has asked for our help. They had a big run on supplies this last week and they are really, really low. And they could really use our help with personal hygiene items. These are things that we've been supplying uh, on an ongoing basis for years now. Toilet paper, uh, bar soap, laundry soap, feminine hygiene products, toothpaste, uh, large, uh, large bottles of shampoo, um, just things like that to help people who just uh, don't have the stuff that they need. Would you believe that a lot of times people who are in need have to make a choice between the types of soap that they buy? So they, they buy one and they use it for all things. Washing their dishes, washing their clothes, washing their bodies. It's great to be able to provide the items that they need to support them. If you can help with this, I would love to fill my truck on the September 27, bring them on out to Windy Hills Winery. We'll pack it all up and we'll get it all, uh, we'll get it all over to the Ridgefield Family Resource Center. With that, I would like to invite you to pray with me this morning, and then we're going to go back into a little bit of time of musical worship. We'll just spend a little time singing this morning, lifting our praises up to God. I love being able to do that, and I am so grateful for our worship team, for those who lead us uh, and, and, and provide their talents so that we can worship together. Will you join me as we pray this morning? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you and we want to celebrate you. We want to thank you, Lord, for how you have poured out your Holy Spirit on us, how you have invited us into relationship through the, uh, through the gift of your Son. Uh, Lord, as he died on the cross for our sins and then as he rose from the grave so that we could have eternity with you in heaven. Lord, we are so grateful for this. We, we pray, Lord, that you would just um, fill us with your presence this morning as we worship together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And with that, I would invite you to lift up your voices as we sing together this morning. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the 
At this time, I want to just announce our offering. The offerings that we take go to support the ministries of Christ's community as we continue to do the work that God has called us to uh, right here in the neighborhood that we're in. Uh, we are here because God has moved us here. We wouldn't be here for any, uh, for any other reason. And the offerings that we take, they go to support the work that we're doing. I mean, they go to do things like pay the rent for our building, pay the rent for the school. They pay my salary and Elena's salary. They make it possible, though, for us to have a ministry in this place. And so what I would like to do is invite you this morning, uh, whether you're a regular attender, a member of Christ's community, or even if you're a guest with us this morning, I'd like to invite you to reflect on how God has blessed you in your life and how he might be calling you to give back out of the rich blessings that he has poured out upon you. There are a couple of ways that you can give to Christ's community. They're up on the screen. Obviously, dropping in the red box will be something for next week and going forward. But we invite you to visit us online, ccridgefield.com, open up your church app, uh, or you could mail to us at our PO box in Ridgefield. But take just a few moments, reflect on how God has blessed you and how he is calling you to give back to him out of what he has given to you. Welcome back. You know, as I was preparing for what we were going to talk about this week, I spent a lot of time this week working on our next installment of our study in Ruth. And I'm really excited to share that with you. I'm really excited for where we're going with Ruth. We're going to be talking about uh, how we can learn some lessons from Ruth that'll help us with making decisions in our lives, help us with uh, just... Uh, just following God and letting His, uh, his hand uh, orchestrate our steps just as He does with Naomi and Ruth and Boaz. But as I got further into this preparing for our online service today, as I was working on uh, what we were going to do because we, uh, we changed things around kind of at the last minute, I realized that things just... They, they weren't flying. Uh, you know, things just weren't coming together. It wasn't that there wasn't material to speak on, but it just didn't feel like the right thing. And, and one of the things I've really been trying to do lately is, uh, is be in tune with how God is speaking. Uh, this is one of those challenging things, uh, at least for me, because God doesn't speak to me with an audible voice. I wish he did. You know, I wish I heard his voice saying, Eli, I want you to do this, or Eli, I want you to go here, or Eli, this is, this is how I want you to lead, or what I want you to speak about. Man, it just was not clicking. All I knew is I felt like I was running up against a wall. I felt like it was just the wrong thing. And you know what I realized at the end of the week? Was that I was frustrated. Have you ever been frustrated? And then when I get frustrated, the, the problem I have with being frustrated is that I just, I wonder if I'm not having enough faith. You know, maybe I'm not listening. Maybe I'm not hearing. Maybe I'm just not doing things right. And with frustration often comes a lot of guilt. Maybe that's the Lutheran side of me. You know, I, I grew up a Lutheran. I also grew up German. They weren't two together at the time. Um, but uh, it seems like guilt is built into my, baked into my DNA. You know, not only was I frustrated with the way things just weren't coming together, I was just, 
the devil will use every opportunity he can get his scaly little hands on to mess with our faith. And then we get to Friday and we have to make a decision about what we're going to do this weekend. And, you know, I look at the air quality and I talk to Mike and we just decide, uh, you know, we hear from Windy Hills and the tent is all covered in smoke, fallout from the smoke and they have to get it all cleaned up. And so we decide, you know, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to, we're just going to go online. And this, this honestly for me is a blow for every one of you who I know loves coming together to worship together in person. Uh, for me, this is a huge part of who I am and what I do. I make jokes at times about how, you know, I don't do well in front of people and uh, how much of a challenge it is to be a public speaker. I never imagined God would call me that way. Uh, and yet, it's, it's a huge part of who I am. There is no place that I would rather be on Sunday morning than getting up and sharing in the presence of God with all of you. And yet as we look at projections and hints about stuff that we don't know whether it's going to come true or not, and we have to make a tough call. And so I'm frustrated because we can't be where we want to be. And this is kind of the song for the last six months, isn't it? You know, we can't be where we want to be. And despite all of the times that I find successes and I find, uh, find evidence of, of God working, as, as I know that he is moving, as I, as I know he has done amazing things during this time, and he will continue to do amazing things because this is who he is, right? And this is how he works. He redeems difficult and challenging and painful situations. We learned that in Ruth in the very first week. He begins to redeem their pain. And yet I'm frustrated. And then, and then I get up on Friday and I see the air quality improving. And then I'm on Saturday and the air quality is the best it's been in months. You know, we have clean air. The rain has come through. And I know that there are trials and challenges out there that firefighters are going through right now. You know, it's, it's not like everything is good. And, you know, just a side note, I've been praying for firefighters and emergency workers a lot lately. Uh, I just can't imagine what they're going through. And, uh, I just want to invite you uh, to just take some time, maybe this afternoon, maybe today after service is over, just to, uh, just to add them to your prayer list. Just, just take a few moments and pray for them because I just can't imagine uh, the, the burden that they're under. And as much as the rain has helped, the fires are still burning and uh, they really need our, uh, our prayers for God's intervention. But I got to thinking that if I'm frustrated with everything that's going on, if I, if I find that uh, I feel like, you know, the devil's just throwing up roadblocks all over the place, I imagine I'm not the only one. Maybe you're feeling frustrated too. Maybe everything that's happened over the last six months has just uh, caused you at times to just wish that you could stand up and just scream your frustration out. And I was thinking about how God interacts with us as we've been going through this study on Ruth and we, we see that God interacts so subtly at times. He reveals himself through other people. He reveals himself through his word. He reveals himself through open and closed doors. And so I, I turned to, I, I opened up the Bible. I was looking for some inspiration. And I came across 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6, uh, verses six and 7. And I don't want to share that verse with you this morning because it really gave me, well, it gave me some comfort because it, it showed me some truth. And, and here it is. Let me read it for you. And then maybe you can see where I'm going with this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6-7 to seven says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, 
Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I want to look at the last part of that first, where, uh, where it says, cast all your anxiety on him. This isn't just a suggestion. You know, it's an invitation. But what I really grabbed a hold of there is that anxiety is a real thing. Anxiety happens. It, it affects us. It's, it's not new. I'm, I'm not the first person with anxiety. It's not something that I need to feel guilty over because there is an assumption that we are going to experience anxiety. And anxiety often presents itself in the form of frustration. There's fear. We're going to have struggles. The truth of the matter is it's a real thing and it's there. And when I feel like I'm beating my head against the wall, First Peter says, I need to bring that and I need to cast it on God. Not that I'm blaming him for it. Not that I'm, I'm trying to afflict him with it because he's not going to be afflicted by my anxiety. But instead, why do I cast it on him? Because he cares for me. Because he has concern and care for me. And who am I amongst all of the billions of people who live and who have lived and who will live? Who am I that God should care for me? And yet this is who God is. He shows his care for each and every one of us when we're frustrated, when we're anxious, when we're angry, when we're tired, when we're fearful. God invites us to bring it to him, to lay it down, to put it on his shoulders. Jesus said, take my yoke upon your shoulders. Let me take yours. He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. You take your burdens. You lay it on me. And you take up mine because I can give you rest. I can give you peace. And so I found comfort in these words in 1 Peter because it says that anxiety is real. Frustration is real. And what I'm struggling with, maybe my faith needs to be stronger. I, well, honestly, my faith always needs to be stronger. You know, this is the process of sanctification. This is the process of being made holy, being made into the image of Christ. We are going to grow. We are going to get better. You know, having faith is also about practicing faith, you know. And if you ever played sports growing up or were in choir or band, you know, I had a, teach, uh, I had a coach once tell me, you know, practice makes perfect. We don't get there without practice. If we just assume that our faith is going to grow on its own, it might. But our faith is meant to be active. And when we are active in our faith, we work that faith muscle and it grows. And so God says, cast all your anxieties on me. Why? Because he cares. He loves you. He loves me. He starts this with humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. And all I can see, and I know this reference is probably going to bypass a lot of you, but uh, um, I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies, and in the uh, most recent Avengers movie, we have uh, one of the great enemies is Thanos. Um, just the one thing I think about with him is he's just this big guy with this big hand, right? And so that was just an image to me as, as it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. It's something bigger than me, something more powerful than me. I'm asked to humble myself. You know what humbling means? means place your, yourself in his care. Place yourself in his hands. That he may do what he may lift you up. Where does frustration get you? It gets you down on the ground. It gets you down in the muck. You feel low. But humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up. In due time, on his timeline, we may, we may be experiencing anxiety and frustration right now. But God says, bring it to me. When time right, I'm going to move you on. This is the interesting thing about ministry, and I've discovered it a lot uh, more in the last six months. Can you believe it? Elena has been with us six months, and having someone in the office, I had forgotten what that was like. 
we talk a lot, and we talk about ministry, and we talk about what God's doing. And when you really start thinking about it so much, you experience kind of this roller coaster ride. I mean, you have these moments where you're really high and things are clicking and you see ministry and you see stuff that you want to do and you see God uh, God painting a picture of what's going to come. You know, we talk through children's ministry. We got the, the panels. Uh, I, I don't even know if I can accurately paint a, minis- a picture for you of what children's ministry is going to look like, but picture walking in to Ridgefield High School and where you could see into the, uh, into the cafeteria, the commons area instead, we're going to have that all curtained off and it's going to be clearly a special space. And when you walk through with kids into that area, we've got all these really cool walls that are going to kind of separate it in. And on the floor, mats that they can sit on. And we'll have a sound system and we'll have a TV for the uh, children's video. And uh, there's going to be a big curtain that hangs behind right up at the front of the children's area. When they walk in, it'll have the CC Kids logo on it. And it's just so exciting to see what's happening and to see the fact that that God is moving and he's given us the resources to create this space so that when parents bring their children in, my prayer is that they stop and they go, wow. And kids go, that's my spot. That's where I belong. And in addition to that, we're working on a youth space here at the office for our youth to meet. We have youth. We have youth kids who are meeting together right Uh, right now, well, not right now, but every single week they've been meeting, every single week for the last several weeks. And they're doing activities and things are happening. And it's so cool. And so we get up on these high moments. But you can't stay on the mountaintop forever. You can't fly with euphoria forever, at least not until Jesus comes back. And so eventually you plummet off the cliff. And you struggle. And that's where I found myself at the end of this week with frustration. But Elena and I were having a conversation and I came to a realization that was so simple, so simple and yet so profound in the way that it impacted me. And it's really what, thinking about that conversation is what led me to talk about frustration this morning, to put Ruth on hold for a week and acknowledge that things have been a challenge. And we had this conversation and what came out of it is Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. No matter what's going on in my life, Jesus is Lord. No matter what's going on in your life, guess what? Jesus is Lord. No matter how frustrated you are with politics, guess who's Lord? Jesus is Lord. No matter how frustrated you may be with your job, guess what? Jesus is Lord. You may be in a really high spot right now. Things are going great. Jesus is Lord. You may be down in the valley. This is where I've been. And yes, it happens to pastors and church workers and people who spend their entire day focused on what God is saying. We end up in the valley too. That may be where you are. But you know what? Jesus is Lord. This is the promise. His Lordship doesn't change just because we end up in a valley. We end up in a place where we're depressed or frustrated or angry. John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says to them, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. There it is again. In this world, you will have trouble. Right from Jesus' own lips. In this world, you will have trouble. But we're not supposed to let it get us down. Or when it does get us down, we bring it and we cast our cares on God. We let Jesus take our yoke up. And he says, you'll have trouble, but do what? Take heart. Have hope. Be courageous. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. The world may get you down. But when you are in me, my victory is your victory. How cool is that? You know, I think about Jesus dying on the cross. This was a great, this was a huge moment. You know, Jesus went to the cross to pay the price for our sins and he died. But you know what? The story doesn't end there. And you know why? 
Because if he had died on the cross, he would have paid the price for our sins, but that's all that would have happened. Our sins would have been paid for, but there was no eternity. Jesus rises from the dead so that we have the hope of eternity. We get to go live with him in his father's house. This is what Jesus says, I've overcome the world. It's not going to keep you down. When your hope is in me, yeah, you're going to face trouble, but I've overcome it. And you can rejoice because of that. He says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In your frustration, find peace in Jesus. I think what I get out of all of this is it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to have anxiety. It's okay to be afraid. It's even okay to be angry. But it's not okay to persist in it. When these feelings and emotions affect our lives, it's okay. But then we seek Christ. Then we take peace because He has overcome the world. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know how the last week has affected you. I mean, in addition to not being able to go outside because the air was, I mean, felt like you could chew it. But in addition to that, you know, when it says hazardous for sensitive groups, that's me. That's where I'm at. I'm a sensitive group. I deal with asthma and, uh, and allergies and, you know, sinus issues. And I know a lot of you do as well. So maybe you were experiencing this. There was a physical component to the last week, especially. You know, for the last few days, I've been dealing with massive, almost blinding headaches. Issues with breathing. Maybe that plays into the frustration. You know, it's hard to walk through pain. It's hard to keep your spirits up when you're struggling like that. When you've got this major physical discomfort. And yet there's one final verse I'd like to share. And this is the one that speaks to this lordship. And it comes out of Revelation. And if you've never read Revelation before, it's something of a weird book. You know, it's apocalyptic literature. It's, it's also, it's end times. It's talking about uh, what's coming. It's heavily, uh, uh, heavily, um, I think, metaphorical. I mean, we're not going to know until the moment happens. But this vision that John has talking about, uh, you know, this creature with wings and heads and, you know, a, a beast with, a, with many heads, with, with horns on his heads and a horn coming out of a horn and all these different things. It's, it's kind of a crazy book. It's fun to read. But it also speaks very strongly of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And in Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, it talks about Jesus this way. It says, On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Written on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written. He is named in Revelation the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is none greater. When it feels like everything's fallen apart all around you, it feels like you're just climbing uphill and you're just sinking deeper in the mud as you do it. When every step forward feels like you slide two back, or maybe three, or four, like you're not making any progress whatsoever. Take hope in the fact that He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, even in the midst of your struggles and frustrations. I hope me sharing a little bit about my week and how I've been feeling uh, helps you just a little bit because we all struggle. We're all human. And yet, we have hope in Jesus. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And you're not alone. 
but he's right there with you. God bless you this morning. God bless you this week. He's right there with you. Go in peace. Amen. Let's share the blessing together, shall we? Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. I think the only way to respond is to sing just a little bit more. Will you join me as we praise our Father in heaven?